Let's lift our hands and bless His name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 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 Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Just one prayer. Father, visit me tonight. In the name of Jesus. Please lift your voice. Visit me tonight in the name of Jesus. Visit me tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Father, we ask you to help us tonight. In the name of Jesus, we receive access to the spirit of revelation, the spirit of wisdom. In the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Please be seated. Good evening, everyone. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I greet everyone in Jesus' name. Unto him who sits on the throne. Blessing and honor. Blessing and honor. It's to Jesus, the Lamb that was slain. Glory and power. Average church service, please listen. In an average church service, many things happen to people that they never are aware of. Impartations, healings. Your assignment as a ministry is to make the atmosphere conducive. That's your job. You have no power to change any man. Listen, the assignment is to make the atmosphere conducive for the healing presence of jesus for deliverances to happen you see that when the atmosphere is set any utterance that comes from that glory will produce results it becomes easy for deliverance to happen don't we are organized people but you see we must be careful so that we do not bring tradition and box the potentials of the holy spirit when we come before him it is because we are aware of our inadequacy so he becomes the lord of the service there is a system of coordination of course 
but he must be allowed to reign supreme this is the secret let me tell you this is why many people never experience the power of god in church because we don't allow him we come as men of god and want to interrupt him the ushers come to interrupt him the worship team comes to interrupt him but if we can align with him the reason why you are coming is first before you love because you love god second because you are coming to grow thirdly you expect his power to touch an area of your life is that true yes so is 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 time wasted if you come and commit whatever number of hours you spend here and you cannot leave back with an evidence many of you here this is your first experience think how terrible it will be that you left wherever some of you are pastors that came to refire your spirit and get an impartation some of you are leaders in various places how could you come and just watch a man talk for a few hours and share the grace and go it's not only sin is wickedness it's not only sin against God it is wickedness hallelujah our job is to make sure you experience God in his entirety the program was so designed that every face tackles an aspect of your life and that by the time we're sharing the grace what escaped praise and worship will not escape the fire of prayer what escaped the fire of prayer will not escape revelation you see that so the programs are designed we're, we're not religious people trying to advance a man's ministry god is bigger than that this is serious business of changing people's lives are we together we're excellent people but we are not stupid people when it comes to transformation i'm not um, you can dress well and look well but the moment it comes to the destinies of men we must be serious we must take it seriously because we are stewards by grace and we must be accountable unto god hallelujah praise the lord i'm going to speak briefly um but I, I want to pray i just want to pray as i was sitting i sensed in my spirit that there were people who needed um a touch of the holy spirit and and for various reasons these things happen this touch can bring deliverance this touch can bring direction when the holy spirit touches you um there are many reasons why he touches you sometimes even you who is imparted you may not know why but for many people that is the answer to your prayer the anointing comes as the answer to your prayer it is not faith that answers your prayer faith connects you to the anointing it is the anointing that does the job your faith is your conviction faith does not bring results on its own the job of faith is to connect you to the power of god it is the power of god that supplies the possibilities hallelujah so you shouldn't be here having sicknesses having burdens and then we're just preaching and then it's not it's not working in your life so i want to pray for you hallelujah there are families that are represented that deserve the touch of god and um i know that he will bless us he will lift us in the name of jesus christ hallelujah just two things the lord is imparting the spirit of wisdom this is this is what this is what the lord is speaking to me and this is not everyone but that anointing there is a grace there is an unction that is going to come on several people is an unction strange grace for wisdom grace for wisdom supernatural grace for wisdom all the overflows whether one two three doesn't matter where you are um, it, it there are exact impartations that are coming on people right now let me just do that job by the spirit i stretch my hands by the spirit and i command it so now i declare i send an anointing upon the word let the performance of the word be accomplished everywhere inside overflow one overflow two overflow three i command it so in the name of jesus wisdom this is what many of us need in this season is coming upon you that grace that grace wisdom to surmount mountains mountains everywhere there are people following online that grace the angel of his presence 
is bringing upon your life the hand of god is resting upon you wisdom the spirit of wisdom receive it i know that we're all getting it but there are specific people that this is for you will not escape it once it's for you the word of the lord will look for you will look for you no matter where you are for as long as you are within this vicinity the word of the lord will search for you and that impartation will happen in your spirit in the name of jesus i speak it i command it i decree it as an ordinance in the spirit everyone who must carry this level of grace wisdom wisdom that will bring an end to mountains that stand before you in the name of jesus christ hallelujah the second thing that i see the lord imparting is the healing anointing now this doesn't happen all the time but i'm seeing it happen healing anointing the lord wants to bring a new level of the healing anointing in the name of jesus christ there are people that must carry that anointing the lord is saying i have been waiting upon you there are people whose bodies need the touch of the spirit not just you being healed the healing anointing that grace you have seen it in your dreams you have seen it in visions in prayer meetings god has told you but in the name of jesus i activate that dimension in the name of jesus take that anointing take that anointing the healing grace the healing power of jesus the healing power there are some of you who are visitors this is your first time coming but the lord brought you because you need an encounter with that unction in the name of jesus receive receive of that grace let there be a transference of that grace that dwells in the secret place of the most high take it half you reign you reign you reign you opportunities restoration of anointings graces graces connections in the name of jesus i'm hearing it in the spirit restoration restoration god is creating scenarios in people's lives recreating it again recreating it again by the spirit of god Restoration, restoration, restoration. 
make sure you believe it restoration restoration financial restoration spiritual restoration restoration in career opportunities relationships Listen, there are people here, the dimensions of God you used to experience. Something happened and it looked like that portal just closed. I'm hearing in my spirit restoration. Let there be a reopening of those doors. The gate that was open in the spirit that gave you access to that dimension. Let it be reopened. Regardless of the reason why it was closed, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, let it be open. Your relationship with the Holy Spirit is the access that you seek. In your relationship with the Holy Spirit is the wisdom that you seek. In your relationship with the Holy Spirit is the power that you seek. In your relationship with the Holy Spirit is the influence. If we will spend half the time we waste around committing to His presence, the pursuit not looking for rema not looking for power not not all of these things focusing staying with him there are many prayer warriors that will never find his presence because we have turned it into idolatry there are many fasting giants that may never find him because they are just motions there are many Bible study giants that may never find him because we shroud ourselves in activities. The power is not in the activities. It's in the sincerity of your heart, your pursuit. It's not in the activities. 
it says and ye shall seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart please sit down if you can a lot is already happening now just allow those under the anointing this is koinonia I'd like you to be sensitive tonight as I teach we have begun the year expect impartations impartations mean that God is doing something impartation means that there is a transference you see that there is a transference of possibility and whether you are in any of the overflows let me tell you truthfully speaking the only advantage that those inside have over those outside is just the convenience that does it spiritually speaking those things don't make any there's no difference at all doesn't matter what nation doesn't matter where it's just our psychology to think we are nearer to the man of god god can speak to someone in overflow three smuggling himself somewhere near the wall nobody knows and then god just visits him like that this is the ministry of the spirit hallelujah i want to teach you something tonight that I really believe with all my heart will grant you access to not only have intimacy with God but it will grant you access to walk in the reality of signs and wonders I will continue to teach these things is my assignment to guide us to help us become spiritual people you don't become a spiritual man by frowning your face you don't become a spiritual man by being a talkative you don't become a spiritual man by show of religion it is a dimension in the spirit you climb to when you are there everything around you knows you are there it's an exact location there is no guess about it hallelujah when God gives a word by now you already know that every time prophecy comes there is always a commitment there is always a commitment hallelujah in overflow one there are two people the power of god is coming on please bring them inside i want to prophesy to them you are here working miracles i worship you I worship you. You are here, wiping every tear. I worship you. Way maker, way maker, miracle work, come to sleep, light in the darkness. the word for these people the lord says even the lawful captive shall be delivered even the lawful captive i break the siege of witchcraft there is strange operation of witchcraft i command the siege of witchcraft be broken in the name of jesus even the lawful captives shall be delivered i will contend with them that contend with you I will contend with them that contend with you even the lawful captive the siege over your families the siege is broken right now the siege is broken I decree it and I declare it by the authority of the kingdom the siege is broken the siege 
is broken the lord says i should continue prophesying it that the siege is broken is broken i use this as a point of contact to speak to everyone under the sound of my voice if there is anything sitting on anyone's destiny in the name that is above all names i stretch my hands and i command in the name of jesus that every chain that holds the destiny of anyone here i command that that chain is broken right now in the name of jesus over your life and over your family i declare that it is broken in the name of jesus please sit down sit down just allow me to do my mad thing here for a few minutes we'll get back to the word the spirit of death oh death where is thy sting oh grave where is thy victory i shut the mouth of the grave i shut the mouth of the grave why am i prophesying this i shut the mouth of the grave 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 in the name of jesus over every family i shut the mouth of the grave i shut the mouth of the grave I shut the mouth of the grave. Listen, let me tell you. Hold on. That's not what I'm teaching. But you see this grave is a spirit. There are people there that can call people who are alive to come and join them. I have a series there and I will teach you death, hell and the grave. I will teach. The, we have a lot this year. But you see this grave you see is not a pit there are people it was it not a conversation that was happening lazarus and they said please let somebody go there that means someone that is out that's why i say oh grave where is your victory that the grave can choose a person and say bring him to join us i say it again the mouth of the grave sheketo kaskataba bekoto seketeriakata the mouth of the grave is shot over every family shot over every individual <laughs> hallelujah listen don't mind the physical actors that act it can be accident it can be anything it's a lie there is a call the grave as a living thing can pick somebody and say let him come and join us i've seen the spirit of death you know that so for me it's not it's not a it's not a mystery at all hallelujah do you know i once saw a vision of someone a real vision i saw the person already buried but in the physical, he was walking happy and ha he didn't reach three months. That person died. In the realm of the spirit, he is already done with. The person is alive, having plans. Whereas the grave has called him. Pray in one minute and shut the mouth of the grave. Pray, don't be afraid. Oh death, where is your sting? Oh grave, where is thy victory? Oh death, oh death, oh death, where is thy sting? Oh grave, where is thy victory? I curse you by the God of heaven. Oh death, where is thy sting? Oh grave, where is thy victory? Pray, pray. Oh death, where is thy sting? Oh grave, where is thy victory? Pray for your family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
hold on let me talk to that woman you see this woman leave her she knows why she's coming come i'm looking at this woman and i'm seeing a woman that has already died it's over with her this woman i'm seeing she has been seeing it dead men calling her calling her in the night some of you have seen it people who have died that's the grave calling you pray again and say i reject that call i reject that call O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? O death, where is thy sting? Oh grave, where is thy victory? Makapogoto Sokotoba. We challenge the gates of the grave. We challenge the gates of the grave. We challenge the gates of the grave. Hallelujah. Please sit down. Just help those under the anointing. Hallelujah. This, this is what should be when you come into the presence of God. Burdens lifted, plagues stopped, not time wasted not time wasted only god knows how many obituaries were averted just by having access to intimacy with the holy spirit don't live your life anyhow becoming a victim of the wickedness let me teach you something a am i boring you am i wasting your time next time you have a dream and you see dead people calling you don't get up and just jot it down whether it is raining or not if you have to cancel your job for that day is it not when you are alive you go for work if you get up and see dead people where i don't care whether it's your own mother or father once you are dead is gone the familiar spirits use the face of individuals some of them can be our loved ones they come and they dine with you there are encounters there are people who have died in christ they are called the spirits of just men made perfect i have encountered some of them but this one is death calling you calling your children sit down allow the devil come and destroy you that's what happens to people they don't do anything about it and you see and because they don't act one day you find out that you just get up whereas it was concluded remember the book of job they were discussing in heaven and the man was living happily and in one day everything happened that an entity has left this realm does not mean it has stopped functioning this realm is not the only realm where people function there are powers that operate they can go out of this realm and call people Jesus knew that principle. That's why he stood and called Lazarus back. This is how to be spiritual. Not just for yourself, to help other people. Now with this knowledge, God can reveal to you something the devil wants to do about somebody because you know what to do about it. You don't sit down and it happens and say, hey, I saw it all. You stop it. This grave you see, read what solomon said about it in the book of proverbs it can never say enough this grave it keeps opening hell and enlarge itself opens receive people finds young people just when people are at the prime of their life that devil comes from wherever don't ever make death look like a mystery it is as predictable a spirit as sickness innocent people plan their lives i don't know why i started talking about this 
plan their lives and do all. Do you know when the devil finds out that there's nothing he can do with your life? He can't make you live God. He can't make you this. The next plot is to kill you. Whether or not you die in Christ or not, at least you are dissociated from your body. It's still a plus for him. Make sure you insist that you are here for a long time. There is work to be done. Give birth to children and before the ch children are still young, you die and leave them. And leave them in the hands of wicked people. It's not to make you afraid. It's to let you know that death can, it has, it attempts, death is boastful. He said, oh death, where is your victory? It's important to go where you know God is. You don't know when your word and your deliverance. When, when, when we say invite people, it's not because a man of God is looking for fame. Somebody is the answer to a family that the devil is about to crash. Just coming to stand in the cold and that's the end of it. Hallelujah. Death. We're ending that plague. You can live long, you can live strong by choice and with confidence. I choose life. You choose life for yourself. Choose life for your children. If they are too small to choose, your decision can cover for them until they get to the age of discretion. Don't sit down and allow the devil say this one is small. You see how the devil kills children as much as he kills people. Hallelujah. Let's try to discuss something. Thank you so much. For those of you who are coming for the first time, this is koinonia. This is koinonia. First John. We're looking at the epistle of John. I want to share a few things about the spirit life. God is helping us to build capacity and he's helping us to become spiritual people. And part of the, the parameters for measuring spirituality, like I've taught us, is first our conformity to the image of the Christ and then second our comprehension of the mysteries of the kingdom. But then there is a dimension of it that I want to introduce to us tonight. And is a dimension where Christ is seated at the heart of every individual. And I'm not just talking of born again. Born again is a decision, is a willingness to embrace the Lordship of Christ. But there is a journey that a believer must follow to get to a point where Christ is experientially seated in his heart. That place is the place of power. That place is the place of authority. That is the place where Satan, death, hell and the grave can come to you and go back because they do not have anything in you. There is a realm of immunity. I'm trusting God that we rise as believers to dimensions where we no longer are the receptors of these basic things of the kingdom, but we become the distributors of this reality. Is that true? First John chapter 2 and verse 15 a popular scripture here i want us to examine it just listen to me carefully first john chapter 2 thank you jesus first john chapter 2 first john chapter 2 verse 15 the holy spirit is speaking to me again and i will bring laughter to her family and I will bring laughter to her family. I will bring laughter. You will hear again the sound of laughter. The sound of melody. You will hear the sound of laughter. You will hear the sound of laughter. That's what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. You will hear the sound of laughter. You will hear the sound of laughter. Love not the world neither the things that are in the world please follow me carefully if any man love the world the love of the father is not in him verse 16 
for all that is in the world the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes the pride of life is not of the father but it's of the world 17 and the world passeth away and the loss thereof but he that doeth the will of god abided forever go back to verse 15 there is a journey into what we call carnality carnality is not um it's not necessarily a bad word it's just a description of a state please listen carefully when we say a man is carnal it's not supposed to be an insult are we together the bible says for to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace so the bible gives us the progression of carnality carnality is not materialism carnality leads to materialism are we together carnality is not unrighteousness carnality leads to unrighteousness listen very carefully and this is how the journey starts number one love not the world the word world there is the world system the governing system the system of activities that are in the world it's not just talking about um, um it's not just talking about the cosmos alone you see that it's not just the word cosmos like the social system of the world alone but it also has an extension is the word aeon the the thinking pattern the mentality the system of operation the modus operandi that comes with the world system listen it says love not the world so that is the foundation that's how believers or people become carnal the starting point of carnality is an attachment an attachment to the system listen not receiving cars and houses that's not carnality not prosperity not poverty no that, that's not what i'm talking about many people have taught carnality from a very legalistic and religious standpoint and have robbed people of enjoying the blessings of god that's not what i'm talking about at all but then he says the word there is eros love attachment attachment so the first thing is that when a believer is about to um, begin to walk with God the first dimension of the workings of the spirit is to be able to culture and pull your attachment to this system and the appetites in this system you can have things but when they have you it's called carnality the mistake of the rich fool was not his possession he said my soul find rest that was his mistake not not the abundance but that the basis for his rest was in the supposed acquisition of those things are we together now so the bible says love not the world it's a warning it's a warning that if you want to be spiritual do not be attached that means every one of us by default born of a woman there is a probability to being attached with this system the flamboyancy that is associated with this system their their desires and their lusts and their appetites that this is something that by default we can become victims of then he moves further and says neither the things that means it is possible that you hate the world and all of that but the things that are there you can be attached to them you see but let me tell you forget about walking with god when the things of this world are glued to you the bible we're, we're, we're still on that journey it says if any man loves the world that means he gives you a little test like saying if any man has a pounding headache there are signs that that man probably has malaria so he's saying that you can check the depth of your love for the the love of god that is at work in you you can easily check it by your attachment your attachment the same way you check your temperature your pressure and all of these things that you can check that love dimension and then it categorizes them into three 
he says all that is in the world the next verse 16 for all that is in the world can be categorized into three number one he calls it the lust of the flesh the limitations that come to you by reason of wearing a human body if you did not possess a body there are certain things that cannot happen to you but now because you sustain a material body that there are side effects to having this body are we together now and he's saying that you must walk with the holy spirit to culture the attachment that can happen to things by reason of wearing a body and then the second he says the lust of the eyes the limitations that come upon your life on the strength of the things you see how many of you know that the bible says the eye is the light of the body there are things if you did not have capacity to see they will not be planted in your heart the word imagination comes from the word image and that's how we think we think in pictures so you your 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 eyes creates a perception and it latches onto your heart and then it begins to be the basis of your not responding to the impulses of the spirit are we together now the lust of the eyes and then the third is called the pride of life you've heard me teach it the pride of life is different from pride you cannot have the pride of life until you have obvious achievements you can have pride whether or not there is anything that has been achieved but the pride of life is the vain glory and the self-glorification that is a derivative of obvious achievements like Nebuchadnezzar having built Babylon he said make me a 90 feet gold of my stature and that at the sound of all the music instruments let all men bow that's the pride of life the pride of life is what happened to Lucifer I will exalt myself above the stars of God I will be like the most high until he was charged with iniquity are we together now and so he's saying that if you can manage the effect and the influences of these temptations in your life that the love of the father is in you and that this will culminate into a life that is spiritual listen the depth to which the power of god flows through you all these miracles these signs and wonders that you see they don't just happen because hands are laid please i, I like us let's let's be um please come david Dam. let's let's not make a fool of ourselves here there is a limit to which you can walk in the anointing just by laying on of hands there are dimensions you have to dig that spiritual well by yourself a track record that is known by principalities and powers and angels and all the forces in the heavens you don't just speak and then god it looks like god owes your word attention no sir no sir for i am a man under authority and the authority recognizes my submission and my loyalty and on the strength of my submission i say to one go and he goes i say to another come it's not my eloquence it is the authority and my degree of submission to that authority are we together now so he says love not the world brothers and sisters let me tell you thank you Dave Dan. this is the problem that jesus came to solve you see if you have an encounter with jesus listen he's not going to ask you whether you believe in the old or new testament that that is nonsense jesus is not going to ask you all those things jesus is not going to ask you and say which part of the ten commandments did you keep or which lord or no 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 he's going to ask you one question just one question his emphasis is to see whether you are seated at the throne of your own heart or he's seated at the throne of your own heart it's called christ self-centeredness and self-centeredness christ-centeredness is when christ is the epicenter the pivot of your life this is what jesus came to give us it is from the standpoint of that state that everything you have can profit you god so designed that you can acquire things without christ being at the center of your heart but that becomes your undoing because they will destroy you and wreck your life 
brothers and sisters i don't care how many hours you pray i don't care how many bible study concordances you have i don't care how many services you have per week if you have not assumed a posture in the spirit where christ is at the epicenter of your heart you are carnal period period you are as carnal as the word carnal it's true it's not an insult it's a description it's a state of a believer you are spiritual not just to the degree to which you pray in tongues you are spiritual not just to the degree to which you access revelation by diligence you can commit your mind and your spirit to access light without being spiritual theologians have spent years i mean remember the scribes and the pharisees they were carnal yet they had the five books of moses out of heart so knowing the scripture by head is not necessarily a proof of spirituality it can be helpful provided christ is at the center of your heart the foundation for a life of greatness listen the foundation for a life of the miraculous any man and woman of God you see around the earth that God is using mightily to do great things carrying and hosting the presence of God that individual has true sacrifice come to a point where Christ is at the epicenter of their lives not money not fame not cars not houses are we together not wife not husband not marriage that does not mean you are unconnected to these things but that christ sitting in your heart now gives value whatever comes comes under his authority if you don't get this this is this is this is power 101 if you don't get this thing forget about spiritual power there are fasting giants who fast with them they are getting lean but they are still sitting on the throne of their heart no so it won't work that way christ must become the center of your life and you can know your attachment your attachment to things your attachment to this system is God helping us when your life becomes Christ centered your life will speak particular languages number one thy will be done thy will be done is the language of men and women who have crucified flesh and self and that Christ is entirely allowed to be glorified in their lives number two that all that is done in and through your life becomes to reveal jesus the revelation of jesus becomes the obsession of your life not the revelation of your prestige not the revelation of your educational prowess not the revelation of oratory and money and power and influence and all of these things the revelation of jesus in and through your life this is a language that is a commitment from a life that Christ is at the center. Number three, that any and all that you do becomes for his glory. The Lord's prayer, for thine is the kingdom, the power and glory. Thine is the kingdom. I receive all of the blessings, but yours is the kingdom. Yours is the power. Yours is the glory. The Bible says, and they glorified God in me. Do you know, listen, do you know the reason why the more I, by the grace of God, keep learning about God, I am seeing why it is hard. Come David Dam, why it is hard for many people to get the attention of God and to be committed with certain things remember my miracle service message last friday can god trust you that's a powerful message go and sit down and listen to it because what god gives you is a measure of his trust for you it's, it's as simple as that if there are dimensions you are praying about and say lord lift me up take me high and god says no way stop praying and saying oh god ask lord what is it in me 
that is the resistance what is in anointing that God cannot give you what is in prosperity that God cannot give you Mike shared a very powerful scripture here that he that did not spare his son but offered him freely shall he not much more with him give us all things but God is not a fool just because he said I will give you all things does not mean you just say come and carry all things he will vet your heart until he finds himself there are we together think about the things that we pursue just think for a moment list them in your mind you don't have to chorus them but list them money career power anointing revelation children wife husband house whatever it is cars and all of that none of these things in themselves destroy but when they come to you the state of your heart can make them evil or good are we together now yes do you know the foundation for jealousy listen the foundation for envy backbiting and all of these things is one word self 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 it is because i want to give a perception that i am a big man so if somebody calls me joshua selman i now say where is the apostle you didn't add it you see that my ego resonated with something that is locked up within me and i react so i say this this guy you are not you are disrespecting me you are trying to say i'm not anointed you see that and this is our lives on earth are is like an an action theme people acting out the level of flesh and self and carnality sometimes we call it spirituality but it's really carnality really carnality love not the world brothers and sisters i show you a secret to rest this is where high blood pressure comes from hello hello this is where high blood pressure ask the doctors they will tell you self-inflicted worrying my ego is on the line see right my ego is on the line if this thing is not done i prophesy to david dam if that word does not come to pass they will now think i'm not an accurate man of god so my ego is on the line i'm not desirous of the prophecy to happen because i want to see his life change i am more concerned about the validation of my anointing than his own change that's the problem the scribes and the pharisees had it was not healing they would not have a problem if it happened through their hands but the fact that it didn't happen through their hands they just found an excuse and say madam don't get healing on sunday and jesus said what are you saying if your donkey falls inside a well on sunday will you leave it there and say i will come back on monday you like money and you are talking this woman her, her health is more than your own donkey if your donkey falls inside a well won't you go and get it hypocrites jesus told them do you know if i can bring every one of us to a point where nothing in this life can take the place of christ i have brought you to a place is a level in the spirit where you will watch satan like this and he will watch you like the gulf that separated the rich man and abraham this is how you will stand truly speaking this is what empowers satan in our lives you know i've taught this here in this house comes when satan comes satan is not as accurate as we think he is listen when he comes he wants to know what is in your heart and the way he will know it is by touching areas in your life at random if he touches your relationship and you don't react he says it doesn't mean anything to you he touches money that's the one that's the area he gets for many of us he just touches your your hundred naira disappears and say no way we are fasting in this house who can and the devil says that's it that's it you think because you mention fasting god is glorified no that fasting is a is a revenge it's an emotional revenge mission your anger and your carnality is making you use a spiritual cover but it's still carnality and you put everyone under pressure nobody is eating six to six whoever did this and that and then the devil says that's it and let me tell you what he will do he will sit on your finances 
and rubbish your life because he knows that that is the area in your life that would distract your prayer life distract he doesn't have to stop you from praying studying the bible it's too hard he just comes to the center of your heart and touches one thing that will boomerang in every other area of your life think how hard it is for him to try to stop your prayer life stop your word life destroy your husband destroy your wife destroy your relay it's too hard so he comes to your heart because whatever is in your heart is the control center truly of your destiny you see that all of a sudden they withhold your salary for two months and a man who was a gentle loving godly sincere born again committed church worker all of a sudden becomes a wild animal in two months because the devil got it there so instead of him saying pastor alpha beat your wife beat your children beat your relatives destroy your spiritual life he just comes and says, pastor alpha what is that one area that christ is not yet lord over when he captures it it will create all the effects that he wants satan cometh to me what is he looking for something that gives him an attachment and let me tell you that thing is what we call lost an attachment i hope you like what i'm, pre I'm preaching this is a deliverance message yes it is yes it is yes it is i watch do you know brothers and sisters kai whatever god did to me may he do it to you truly speaking i say it with all humility my life is a free life i am I will be I will be lying if I tell you it was all my effort I think there is something about the sovereign power of God maybe it's an election of grace he did it but the moment hold my hands David down another person come Emeka come these are the luggages we carry one other person the ladies I don't know how you are going to hold me find a way of holding come 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 we're acting something here hold any part come and hold my hand Okay, they hold it. She's afraid of holding me. She wants to hold David down. Now watch this. This is a prayer warrior. I'm showing you your spirit man. You are a prayer warrior. You are a fasting giant. You are a word addict. But you are carrying. These are the cares Jesus is begging that you give him. That we are refusing. How old are you? I'm 30. You mean it? I thought you were 42. This is the Lord because a broken a broken uh, what spirit can dry the physical bones and it will show on your face so this guy is carrying all this load do you think satan is so foolish to allow this load fall off you with the advantage he's getting do you know how satan ties them he doesn't use a rope he uses your heart that's what is there this is how to be spiritual you come to a point where you say lord i love you but these things are occupying my heart and Lord I'm not irresponsible but then you have to become Lord of my life genuinely I am too attached I can't sleep I sleep for one hour per day because I'm thinking about money a man can have nothing except it is given and you let go the issue of the job the devil will now deceive you and say you better be responsible if you don't think about it it won't come and he said no Jesus, I hand it over to you. Hallelujah. This is the way of the cross. You are getting free. You too, you are strange because you are now feeling lighter. Ah, now, all of a sudden, you could pray. Before you go to pray, after five minutes, you stop praying on your own and you are thinking. But now you could stretch for one hour, two hours. You are becoming lighter. And then all of a sudden, this one is a lady. Hallelujah. Are we together? This is a lady or, or a, a, a gentleman. It can mean anybody. It doesn't have to be a lady or a, a, whatever. Lord Jesus, I must make it happen my way. And God is saying, you will wear yourself to death. Lord, age is not on my side. Is it that you are not seeing? And God is saying, I am Lord of all. If I don't give you anything, it is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow. And he said, Lord, I've been looking at this lady's picture. I can't even pray. And God says, I will, if you think I'm going to talk to you about that lady, you are joking. You better talk to me. Leave this lady and say, God, I want to. But this lady, she has become an idol. Maybe the lady, yes, it's true. 
that's the name it's called idolatry let's call it what it is she has become an idol not because she's bad are you getting what i'm saying now but because she's doing something to your heart and it's affecting your relationship with god so god is going to say lay it down lay it down does not mean leave her lay it down means be willing to leave her hi and you say oh god no now how can i leave this guy this is my 11th relationship but and while you are talking all that nonsense god doesn't say anything he allows you then you now cry cry one night lie down roll and let it go your spiritual life you notice that the moment you surrender something lives in you the more you die you can trace that this came alive because of this that went down you see that love not the world love not the world this one is ministry no i must shine my colleagues started ministry before me and i mean i must do ministry this, this is a lot of especially some of us that have the grace of god upon our lives no i must start the prayer group or the church or the koinonia or whatever it is and god says look calm down for three months you are not holding any meetings oh god my whole reputation was on this small fellowship now you're asking me to close it so that they won't respect me again god said that's exactly what i was trying to show you it was never about the prayer meeting it was about you trying to use spirituality to build an ambition so lay it down you lay it down and then your encounters that stop resumes never will it resume because you are you are passionate about hearing something so that when they gather you say okay ladies and gentlemen i just came back from the throne and god said you won't use me like that is god speaking to us by the time you lay these things down let me show you the moment you focus on christ all of you come closer i'm focusing on christ look at what is happening physically are you seeing this my focus is on him and i turn back and find out so the goal was never to take them away from me the goal was to be the epicenter of my life now watch this whereas before i was the maintainer of them now he's the maintainer so anytime he says give the car after all lord is it not by your mercy it came take it not oh god this voice if it's you let my window share all these all these these things we do are proofs of carnality i was sharing with the leaders somebody called me to confirm whether it was god that spoke to him to send fifty thousand to somebody and i asked him i said if that god told you somebody is supposed to send money to you will you ask to confirm and say lord is it you it's carnality it's the same thing we're saying from my heart to the heavens jesus be the center it's all about you yes it's all about you from my heart to the heavens jesus be the center never prosper financially because of their attachment to money their attachment obsession obsession if they are passing and they smell money they turn their direction and God says no way it doesn't work that way the proof that you are not attached to anything is your willingness to let it go the genuineness anything you cannot let go you are attached to it yes sir yes sir Oh, I'm so blessed hearing this message myself. Are we together? I am shocked at how many of us are shortchanging the power of God in our lives through our attachment to things. How about pastors attached to things, titles, attached to all of them? <laughs> Love not the world this is how to be spiritual you are giving yourself space to host his glory lord i thank you i'm trusting you to get married and lord says all right i will direct you say no lord this is this is the lady this is the guy i must marry if you are the one it must be this and god says that's not the way it works thy will be done it is for your glory your thoughts are higher than my thoughts your ways are higher than my ways I give you all the praise that's a spiritual man lord this is the business i want to do 
I thank you. I have passion for it. But Lord, I am totally submitted to your will. That which you want is what I will do. Hmm. That's the language of spiritual people. You see what God is doing in this ministry? It is because it is not my ministry. If it's my ministry, I would have been far older than I look now. Think how you think how I'll have to beg you and say, please don't be angry. Pastor Femi, come next Sunday. No. Please, if you're a pastor and you are giving yourself that headache, please come to the fountain where great men can rest. There is a Sabbath where he takes over your life your ministry and all that concerns you a man can receive nothing except it is given to him born this into your spirit you cannot have naira and kobo except the majesty opens the heavens over you you cannot have any idea until he gives to you you can invent your ways of doing things and weep and suffer and struggle that's why we don't give you count offering and count five naira. You ate puff puff one thousand. Took another drink, one thousand or wine. Are we together now? And then you come before God and squeeze ten naira, and you are smiling now. All shall wait, and God is looking at your heart. Look what Jesus did in the church. He came and stood and saw what people were giving. It was a reflection of their attachment. It wasn't the money. He saw a woman who had all. Do you know why Jesus was touched? Because she really didn't know who he was. If she had known him, he would be hypocrisy because he was there. She just came. That means she was doing it unsupervised. It was what she would do. Whoever this God is of the Hebrews, I love him. And I lay down everything. Love not the world. This is the problem of many people's destinies. Attachment attachment to money god gave you a car all of a sudden you carry that car and put it in your heart the garage is not enough for it how can you have a garage for a car and not and no altar for god is is carnality we build our homes with garages for five cars and then you meet with god inside the toilet you, you see our value when you go to ease yourself that's why you say oh, lord i'm alone with you and god says you are not serious no you provide a cupboard where you keep your documents, your certificate, because your paycheck is there. And then where do you keep him? He's not in your heart. He's not even around. Far be it from me to create a shrine to keep any other thing when I've not made sure. He says, David said, I'm sitting here in a palace and Lord, I know you sit in the heavens, but I've not built you a house. And God said, ah. You would have built, but you've shed so much blood. However, it was good that it was in your heart. Or you have gathered the materials together and let your son be the one to build that temple. All I want is for you, for you to be glorified, for you to be lifted. All I want is for you for you to be glorified for you to be lifted Luke chapter 15 let me show you something in the story of the prodigal son Luke chapter 15 please give us verse 11 I found out that both the elder brother and the younger brother did the same thing the story of the prodigal son for many years we have harassed the younger brother and left the elder brother all of them did different versions of the same thing follow me verse 11 and he said a certain man had two sons how many sons two sons next verse and the younger of them said to his father give me a portion of goods that falleth to me and he divided unto them now watch this do you know that the house was all about his father but the children had access but then the child was angry because it was not in his name that's selfishness self-centeredness wants it in your name so that somebody was healed in koinonia no i'm not happy let it be that apostle joshua selma was the one who god used so i'm not i'm more concerned about my name being 
attached to the miracle than it is the God of heaven that touched the person. That's self. Are you seeing that now? Yes. The younger son had everything. But every time he saw his father, he had to wait on his father. That day I want something and the father was okay, just a few minutes. I said, no, no. I want something so that I will, it will be in my name. And said, daddy, I'm tired of depending on you. Ah, that's what Christians do. Lord, I'm tired of waiting on you for this power. Give me this thing so that I can do it anyhow I want on stage. Why must I wait for you and worship before you come? Don't you know that it's falling my hand? After clapping for me and giving me water, I come and stand on the stage and I say, Lord, you have to come. Whereas people on my, it's my t-shirt they are wearing with my face, not your face. So Lord, give me this power so that I can operate it independent of you. Prodigal son. He didn't want it. He wanted it in his name, meaning his control. The father said, all right, everyone that asketh, receive it. Now watch this. It says, and not many days after the younger son gathered all together, he took on his journey. Are you seeing? He did not want submission. Uh -uh. A self-centered life wants to be the Lord of yourself the custodian of your decisions to hell with any and everybody i am the lord of myself it's a terrible way of living it says and he did what wasted wasted his substance with riotous living party and all of that because he felt by showing his friends money they will respect him you see that and so he showed all of that and what happened we're reading and when he had spent all there arose a mighty famine in the land and he began to be in want where did limitation enter his life when he left there was abundance and there was supply could it be that your limitation in every area is a reflection that you are dissociating yourself from the authority of the father building an empire for yourself and now you are having to foot your bills by yourself 15 and he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country and sent him into the fields to feed swine brothers and sisters once in royalty having abundance to the point that even the servants were considered privileged people now because he declared that he did not want his father to be the regulator of his life and his activities he wanted to regulate everything by himself this was his destiny and he would fain have filled his belly with this horse that the swine did eat and no man gave unto him 17 and when he came to himself you can be sure that he came to his mind he said how many hired servants of my father have bread enough to eat and spare and i perish with hunger 18 i will arise and go to my father that's what someone needs to do this night and i will say father i have sinned against heaven and before thee 19 i am no more worthy to be called your son make me as one of your servants verse 20 hallelujah and he arose and came to his father but when he was yet a great way off listen his father saw him and had what compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him keep reading and the son said to him father i have sinned against thee and in thy sight i am no more worthy to be called thy son 22 but the father said to his servants bring forth the best robe now hold on the elder brother is about to come now so watch carefully bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet 23 and bring hither the fatted calf and kill and let us eat and be merry why for my son was dead and now is alive to be separated from the authority of god is death to be carnally minded is death you see there but to be spiritually minded is life and with it peace and he was lost and is found and they began to be merry sin two now the elder son was in the field and he came and drew nigh to the house and had music and dancing the guy will always say he's innocent let's examine him now and he called on one of the servants and asked what these things meant 
27 and they said unto him thy brother is come and thy father had killed the fatted calf because he had received him safe and sound and he was help me and would not go in therefore his father came out what if, whoever that father is must be a good father the father left the party and came out and met him and entreated him 29 and he answered now watch this you see this this is what the father the boy said lo many years do i serve thee neither transgress i at any of thy commandment and yet thou never gavest me so two of them wanted ownership it's just that one had it secretly in his heart and another verbalized and said give me two of them had the same lust it's just that one was vocal enough to manifest it whereas and was he not eating in the house was he not celebration that was going on was he not a calf that was but he wanted he said let me go and make merry with my friends is it not the same thing the younger brother was doing two of them two of them were expressions of the same thing one was quiet just like you and the other one is vocal like the sinner roaming around but the truth is that it's still the same thing jesus you be lifted higher higher be lifted higher jesus you be lifted higher so there can be an outspoken brother who is carnal and wants everything it must be car it must be money it must be reputation and you are the quiet brother you are the elder brother you like it you like the honor you like the prestige are we together you like and you can kill for it is just that you are not that courageous so we will be deceived into thinking you are the nice person and the other one who is vocal but the word of god declares to us that two of them need the attention of their father their father attended to the younger one and he still had to come and attend to the elder one because two of them had the same problem christ-centeredness maybe it's because you have not had a big ministry that's why we have not seen the full potential of what is in your heart it may not be that you are humble maybe it's because joshua selman has not owned a private jet that's why you think he's a humble brother so god draws me down say mr man stop looking at jet look at my face so that let's flog this out before jet kills you and takes away there are people who would throw God out of the plane and remain there alone. Tonight is a call. You want to experience power? You want to experience miracles? You must come to a point in your life. Brothers and sisters, you can stand in front of your Jeep like this and say, what a beautiful car. And turn and say, Lord, truly, if you make demand of this, I will give you. And you are not just doing church language. It's from your heart. Yes. It's from your heart. That way, when God gives you the gift of a wife, you will not beat her and say, I must beat you. That's how we are in our family. When we are angry, we beat, we ask for forgiveness later on. That attitude is because you do not know that a man cannot have anything except it is given to him. When God gives you children, you will not allow them to become lawless and say no is westernization because you will know that everything god gives you he demands that you act as though it's his own god never gives us ownership owners are rebels in this kingdom we are stewards of everything his resources mysteries whatever it is it belongs to him it only passes through me so brother, you want to become a multi-millionaire? Do you have the grace to give and give and keep giving and support the work of the Lord and support lives? If it's not in your presence If it's not by your hand 
if it's not by your spirit please don't let me have it for everything I need is in you if it's not in your presence if it's not by your hand Your spirit, don't let me have everything I need is in you. Question Does your wardrobe belong to him? Does your bank account belong to him? Does your anointing know you fasted for it to come, but does it belong to him now? Does your wife belong to him? Does your husband belong to him? Does whoever you are in a relationship with, does it belong to him? Do your children belong to you? Or they are his property? You are only a steward over them. Does your business belong to you? Does your church, does Koinonia belong to him? Or is Joshua Selman's property? Is his um, ladder of greatness? Ah, far be it from me. Too young for that kind of stress. Don't let me have it. Let everything I have be from you. Please don't let me have it. For everything I need is in you. Listen, this is the level where you will see dimensions of power beyond your wildest imagination someone will sit down on your bed and stand up and all of a sudden the fibroid is gone it was so unconscious there is an effulgence of glory that you carry and walk with you broke is a joke God will shake people everywhere to make sure he brings resources for you the things that people do for me never never stop amazing me I thank God for the things that God does. But I am so... Sometimes I just look and I say, Lord, Kai. Someone was going to bless me a few days ago. And it was quite a very large amount. And the person just said, oh, please send me your account number. And I just, as I was ending the call, the Spirit of God was speaking to me about a family that that money was for. You know why God can speak to me like that? Because my life, the account and the favor is his own. I was so happy when he said it. Not just as a law for abundance. It's with all pleasure. My one desire is that you be praised. That you be praised. That you be praised. You're my one desire that you be praised, that you be praised, that you be praised. Hear the word of the Lord tonight. Please come unto me. Come unto me. All ye that labor, labor, profitless labor, labor that you have carried your heart and put inside. <laughs> there is a realm of rest. A man can enter the rest of God. It's not irresponsibility. Everybody knows he's the doer of the miracles. He's the opener of the door. He's the lifter of men. You have separated your ego from these things. If it happens well for you, glory be to God. If it does not happen well to you, Lord, be praised. If the child comes, Lord, I thank you for the testimony. If the child does not come, Lord, while I wait, I still love you. That's one who is Christ-centered. Listen, that's a spiritual man. That's a spiritual man. God is speaking to us. We need to be careful. Our lusts and our appetites are leading us through roads of destruction. We need to come back and say, Lord, I hand everything over to you. People are marrying wrongly. 
because of self flesh the lady must be this beautiful figure eight the guy must be this a millionaire must be this and people keep jump packing rubbish and trouble into their lives how about people who don't even gone at the days this issue of hearing god people have eroded it you just get up and say i want to go to abel kuta because there's green pastures there how about brothers and sisters let's respect and fear god There were times where people never took any step until they heard from God. They would rather be considered failures. We've thrown all that away because of our ego. Let them not say, I'm a graduate and I am not working. If it's not in your presence, if it's not by your hand, If it's not by your spirit, please don't let me have. For everything I need is in you. Listen, we're about to pray. Think for one moment the causes of your worry this morning. Think of the reason why you woke up by 2 a.m. in the morning. All that worry, trace it down. It is self. It is self because he gives his beloved sleep. You rejected it because you are empty. I don't mean waking up to plan your life. There are many they just wake up and say, Life. What a terrible life. How can this ministry grow? How can this ministry grow? Oh Lord, do this. this. How can this ministry grow? And God said, you have been talking about ministry for one week. You have not talked about me. You forgot about me and you have been drumming. Lord, my church must grow. And God says, how about me? Will I grow in your heart? Say, God, leave the show of you. My church must grow. Prophecy came that is my year of this and that. Lord, why is it that I go for meetings and nothing happens? I love you, I fast, but I stand at the end of the meeting, I'm ashamed. And God says, when you die to me and it no longer becomes about you and your reputation, then you will see the glory of the Lord. This is my daily prayer. I'm, I'm praying that God will infect you with that hunger tonight. Please hear me. God is speaking to us. I want you to take, I'm not preaching. I'm talking from the depth of my heart, transferring something from me to you. We need to repent of self-centeredness. And let Jesus Christ be the epicenter of our lives. May God forgive me if I'm lying. But there is nothing I know in my life today that I cannot give God. I ask for forgiveness if I'm telling a lie. But there is nothing I know. Especially things. Things. I can't be that stupid. Some of you are about fighting with somebody because of 100 naira change. God spoke to you since last month. Leave it. Say, no way. I fight for my right. Lord, this is how I left it the other time. They would take me for granted and God is talking to you. Oh, the tailor was supposed to correct this. You must correct it and I won't pay you anything. I will show you that I'm educated. And God said, you see this? The foundation is flesh. Listen, blessed are the peacemakers. Have you heard that scripture? Do you know who a peacemaker is? He says, seek peace. And if you don't find it, pursue it. Look for it by any means. For everything I need is in you. We surround our lives with needless worries as a proof that God can no longer provide. Ha! I will never forget during our crusade, one of, I think it was 2006, a Jimmy had a laptop. He was the only one that had, was it? No, it wasn't a laptop, it was a computer. He was the only one who had a computer at that time. And we're trying to raise money for the crusade. And that's how this guy, I think it was, he just put a notice in the uh, hostel there, Suleiman. Computer for sale. I was so touched. 
I don't know how many of them he has now. He will get it and buy it and buy it and buy the factory. That's what happens when you're hard. Stop admiring people that the gates of heaven are open over. Find out what they did for God to trust them this much. Don't say you are lucky. It's because your father is this. My father is a lie. God supervises our hearts. I've taught it here in Koinonia, but let me say it. When God is closing a door over somebody, don't open it. Don't open it out of sympathy. There are people that I've wanted to help with all my heart and God has stopped me again and again. There is a dealing God is rotting in their life. Don't interrupt the dealing of God. Are we together? There are pastors for many years. They love God but their church will not grow. They are serving God and sometimes you can pity them and say, look, just invite them. Let me come and speak over your meeting and mobilize people for you. And God says, you are doing the mistake that Achan did. Well, um, not, not Uzzah. You are doing Uzzah's mistake. You want to help God to hold the ark. And you find that it will not only strike you, it will strike others associated with you. Our hearts must be given to him. Ladies, please look at me. Sisters, Let's hand over our hearts to him and end this lust for things. Clothes, shoe, they are wonderful. God will give you more than your wildest imagination. Brothers, let's drop this big manism and appetite for titles and a proof to show I am rich so that all and sundry will respect you. It's all nonsense. If you are great, you are great. Honor is a mantle. If you don't have it, you don't have it. It's as simple as that. Tonight is a night of thorough repentance. We are going to cry before God and confess the idolatry, the sin, the carnality of idolatry to say, Lord, I've carried this thing on my head like a do or die affair and it's almost killing me. I hand it over. There is peace in handing over your life to God. There is peace in handing over your children to God. There is peace in handing over your job. Hand over the difficult boss. Don't try to go and be looking for a godfather and the godfather say 50-50, agreed and you are in trouble. No. Allow God who would do it 100-0. He will give you. Bless you. We commit ourselves into things and projects God has no business in because we cannot let him have his way. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. so much of my testimonies because I want people to focus on Jesus and the things that I'm teaching we came back from Lagos last week and after the meeting I was counseling people and I came out to just you know see the pastors and, and then a gentleman was standing there and he was telling me that sir I just wanted to tell you that I brought a car here for you and then I'm looking and say my god what is all this I, 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 because when I hear those kind of things I feel guilty it's as if I'm even bullying them I just, just talk to this please talk to the protocol people and let the church whatever they want to do with it there and I came back and I think day before yesterday or so they still call the protocol the church and say somebody has given a person a car how do we convey it and bring it there it is this car that someone has left God for father this car must come this is already um, what month are we now February car it must come and God is saying Abba, is this how small I am to you I want to show you something open to the book of Matthew the Matthew chapter 1 God I've been crying I've been saying can God is saying look, look how you are making a mess of yourself when you love God and fear God please hear me he would take the prayer request of somebody it's not because I'm a man of God we'll go and ask him what I'm doing don't just say you are lucky there's no luck in this thing you work it out with fear and trembling and passion and fire have your way have your way we are fighting too many battles in our lives these battles are not even there they were created by our lust sister 
let God bring a husband for you. Please rest. Rest and watch what God can do for you in two weeks. Ten years of labor and manipulation can end in two weeks of saying, Lord, I hand it over to you. I vow that I'm going to be a blessing to whichever man you bring. And while I wait for him, I will love you, I will serve your house, and I will prepare for the blessing. God says, that's it. That's all I'm looking for. And all of a sudden, the brother will not be able to sleep again. He will see clearly. There's no haze. There's no confusion. Straight. This is your wife. Stand up and go and see her parents. Instead of walking it out by yourself and sweating around. What of brothers? I must do this. If I can call this one and then he calls this one for me and then I just connect with Pastor Alpha. If I can beg a Jimmy and then beg a Benga and then beg this and that. I, if I put them from, I think three plus three will be six. Three plus three will be not be six forever because there are demons. There are wicked forces that will keep minusing one, minusing different things and the equation never adds up. But when you add it over to God, one plus one can be six. One plus one is anything God says the answer is. If God says it's one million, that's it. Mathematics say one plus one must be two. God says, I create. I don't see under. No, no, no. Whatever I want, the earth is the Lord's. So God can say your third class plus your mother's firewood job equal to an estate. This is God. This is God. Whereas your flesh can say NMPC plus an auxiliary uncle in the bank can still equal to pain and suffering. We are going to pray. Tonight, the Lord is bringing us to the place of rest. The spirit life demands that our desires, listen, our appetites, our ambitions, our aspirations come under submission to his will. This is all God is asking. I was so blessed by Mr. Job's testimony and the wife. Did you hear what they said? They had been trusting God for a baby boy. Are you seeing that? But notice the progression of the way he shared the testimony. The first thing he said was his spiritual life and the way God put his life in order. And then without any effort as it were, a child came could it be that your prayer request your heart is too full for your prayer request to be given to you when you empty it and keep Christ alone then he begins to bring every and anything we are going to sing take all of me please take it high for me don't just sing it as a special number I want you to sing it from your heart. Some of you, as you are singing it, God is going to be dealing with you and talking with you. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. All of me, all of me, Lord. You have my hand. Use all of me, use all of me. I release my everything. You have my everything. Say all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Say all of me, all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Use all of me. Say all. away the idol that sits in my heart attempting to take your place lift your voice and cry take it away except the Lord builds 
a house they labor in vain except the Lord builds a house they labor in vain except the Lord builds a house they labor in vain Take it away. Let that circumcision in the spirit. Let that circumcision over money. Let that circumcision over power. That circumcision over titles. Let it happen, oh God. Purge me. Purge me. Purge my heart. I'm so attached to that will not allow me and thrown you a Christ-centered life a life where everything about you aside from God nothing is a do or die affair Christ Lord and throne hallelujah Prayer point number two. Mention everything you think is greatness in your life and say you come under the Lordship of Jesus. Mention it. Whatever God has done and given you, mention it by name and bring it under the Lordship of Jesus. The marriage you gave me, I bring it under the Lordship of Jesus. The children you have given me, they are taught of the Lord and great is their peace. I rededicate them a handover ceremony the job you gave me I hand it over to you the relationship you gave me I hand it over to you if you brought it you are the one who can maintain it the burden is killing me pray the burden is destroying me <laughs> Lord, you are the one who gave me the prayer group, the church, the business. I'm tired of struggling by my strength. Bring me rest. Bring me rest. The rest that only you can bring. Yeah. 
teaching enter your spirit and you will watch your life like a child favor open doors i tell you the bible says behold i and the children whom who gave you who gave you is god that gives increase i and the children the lord had given me are for signs and for wonders in zaria in nigeria in israel but where do the signs and wonders come from from the lord of hosts i and the children that god has given me are for signs and for wonders in israel from the lord of hosts we are going to pray you are connected to this vision you are part of this ministry pray and say lord not only will my life produce signs and wonders i will be an epistle of that possibility lift your voice and pray i declare pray that i and the children that the lord has given me we are for signs and for wonders for signs financial signs and wonders supernatural signs and wonders dimensions of revelations dimensions of encounters dimensions of increase dimensions of influence dimensions of prayer grace access to the mysteries of the kingdom spiritual men kingdom minded people Hallelujah. Can I add one last prayer point for us? I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, I make a vow before you that whatever you bring to pass through my hand or my life is already rededicated for your glory. Pray that prayer and watch my God surprise you. Pray that prayer and God will give you in one day what your salary cannot give you in one year. Pray that prayer and God will give you houses you did not build. Dimensions of revelations you were not fasting for. Pray. Lord, I rededicate everything. My intellect, the anointing, my home, my wealth, the influence.
apostle i need jesus i need jesus fast in my life haven't heard you preach tonight i confess that i need his life i confess that i need salvation that's somebody talking saying apostle if you will make an altar call i need to run to jesus no playing games no playing games i need jesus fast i need jesus fast and there are people here saying apostle i thought that my heart was really with him but now i'm realizing that i need to rededicate my life i'm only going to count one to three because of time i want you to run like there's fire on the mountain and come and stand here very quickly one one are you coming quickly if you are still thinking about it stay back outside because once here is full we may not have people here again we have to stand outside ready to be praised run to jesus with all your heart swallow your pride tonight come to the school of the spirit don't you know in his hands are the keys to eternal life hey, it's a little here a little dear then your day will dawn is at work in you changing everything in obedience to God you're the Holy Ghost hey. Apostle, I'm not sure whether I'm born again or not. Join them quickly. If you are not sure you are not born again, join them quickly. And come and clear every gray area in your life. This is a destiny thing with Jesus. He's the center of everything. Those of you who are standing here, please just pray in one minute and say, Lord, I'm serious. I'm not just coming out because I'm emotional. I really am serious. I come to you like the prodigal son. I know you will not cast me. Men may cast me away critics may cast me away but you never cast anyone away if you're joining them please quickly join them yes jesus yes jesus hallelujah our time is gone i want you to lift your hands i see a number of you and those of you following online from whatever nation whatever time zone it is there connect with us you are handing your life over to jesus the Bible says the word is nigh thee, even in thy lips and in thy heart, the word of faith that we preach. Say after me, those of you here and all those who are connecting, say, Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart. Tonight, I come to you believing that you alone can save me, can change me, can lift me. I ask that you take over my entire life use it for your glory i receive your life tonight into my spirit and i declare that i'm a child of god the grace to love jesus and to live victorious is mine today and forever keep your hands lifted i declare your sins forgiven I declare by the immutability of God's counsel that you belong to him. Partakers of his divine nature. I bless you. I command and curse the power of sin, the power of hell, the power of the grave, the power of sickness and everything that is not in the Christ over your life. I declare that it leaves you right now in the name of Jesus. I pray that the grace that keeps men, please help those under the anointing there. The grace that keeps men in the name of Jesus will keep you. And I decree and declare that everything that does not represent God in your life lives now and forever. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Thank you so much. There are a number of you. I want you to follow the gentleman waving his hands quickly. There are a number of you. Just cooperate with them.